how frustrating is it to be on the DL? You were really swinging the bat well when you went down, and, and do you feel better now, and you think you'll be right on target when the DL stints over? Yeah, I mean, right now I'm here in Boston, you know, continuing with the rehab, and uh, when the team goes to the break, I'm going to go to uh, Tampa and play uh, around three or four games there and then hopefully join the team back when the team's come back from the break. Is it harder, Carlos, as you get older to be able to recover from some of these injuries? Honestly, uh, when it happens, uh, I thought it was going to be something, you know, that was going to take a couple days. But, you know, once I did the MRI, you know, they, they showed that I had a little strain. But, uh, like I say, you know, right now I feel great. Yesterday I was in, I was able to swing the bat in, uh, at the cage in New York. And uh, today I'm continuing with the program. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to be back with the team. Really weird season, Carlos. You start off in April, you really struggled. May struggled. And then it started to seem like the old Carlos Beltran. Why the slow start, you think? Honestly, I have no idea, uh, Michael. You know what? As a player, you know, uh, you know, you're gonna have a few months where you know you're gonna hit 220, and you know, and having the first month, uh, the way to have it, you know, of course, you know, everything is. Uh, I think uh, a lot of times it's magnified, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I feel like uh, you know I was swinging the bat well when I got hurt. So, you know, I just hoping that when I come back, I'm continue to you know help the team uh, offensively and hopefully defensively. You know, Carlos, you're so cerebral, and you're one of the most intelligent players that I think I've seen. You've always helped the younger guys wherever you've been. So you're a perfect person to ask this question. This is a team that just seems completely different on the road hitting as opposed to at home. Is that just the dimension of Yankee Stadium, or is there something else to the fact that this team doesn't seem to be the same offensively away from the Bronx? Well, honestly, I think we feel every team feels comfortable, you know, playing home, and uh, you know, especially when you play in Yankee Stadium, where you know the ballpark uh, it help you sometimes, where you don't hit the ball well, you still get good results. So, you know, in the road, it seems like uh, this year, you know, we have you know struggled a little bit, but uh, as a player, you know, you don't think about it. You just basically try to approach the game uh, the same way, and hopefully, you know, you get the good results. And uh, you know, like I say, you know, right now we just have uh, we just have to focus and try to finish the season strong. Uh, go for the break, get a little break, get a little rest. Uh, the guys that have been playing every day, and and you know think uh, positive in the second half. Hopefully, we continue to play the same baseball we've been playing all year round. Carlos Beltran is our guest. Carlos, you like this team? I mean, right now a three game lead in the American League East, and uh, it seems like it's a tough, gritty team. It's not like the Yankee teams in the past where they were going to run away with things, but this team doesn't give up. I mean, what's your read on it? Well, I think, uh, you know, we have a lot of guys, uh, a lot of veteran guys that know that, you know, we're going to hit some bumps down the road. But, uh, you know, the most important thing is us being able to stay together and uh, find a way to bounce back. And basically that's what we've been doing all year long, you know. We'll be bouncing back, uh, you know, when um, Ellsbury won the DL, you know, Garner basically uh, took charge in the little spot and was able to get on base. And, you know, that's why he's the all-star. And, uh, you know, Mac Tessera has been healthy all year round. And, uh, and being able to produce a lot of runs. And at the same time, in the middle of the lineup, Alex has been very productive. So, you know, I think uh, the most important thing right now for us is just hopefully we stay healthy in, in the second half. And I believe if we're capable of doing that, we, we're we going to be right there. Are you surprised that Alex has been this good? Not really, man. You know, I know Alex since, you know, since 1999 when I was with the Royals. And, you know, I know Alex is a guy that take uh, this game, uh, you know, with a lot of pride. He has a lot of pride himself in the in why the things that he does. He's a guy that come to the ballpark, work hard, hits, you know, does the things to, to prepare to, to get ready. And, you know, that's why he's he got the numbers that he has, you know, in, in, in his career. So he's a guy that, you know, is, is going to come to the ballpark and work hard and, you know, in spring training. Once I saw him the first day, I said, man, this guy is in great shape. Uh, hopefully, you know, he's capable of staying healthy. You know, pro- production-wise, I wasn't worried at all. All right. Now, one of the reasons that, that, that we have Carlos on today is we want to be able to give some uh, publicity to something that he does. He and his wife are very charitable individuals, and last year they did it. They're doing it again. And next Sunday, after the Yankee game, from 7 to 10 at Gotham Hall in Manhattan, uh, it's going to be the 80 strike back. It's going to be a dinner hosted by Carlos. I'm actually going to be the MC, and I'm thrilled to do it. Carlos, what what does this dinner uh, do, and what does it raise money for? Well, uh, Michael, you know this. We've been doing this event for almost 10 years, and uh, uh, you know. Ten years ago, I had a you know a dream, and you know I was hoping that to do something special for you know 
Puerto Rico and help the kids and help baseball back home. And, uh, you know, about five years ago, I decided to build a high school specializing in baseball. And uh, we've been open five years, and, you know, we've been helping uh, around 200 kids in those five years. And, you know, this event is to raise money to help these kids to continue to achieve, you know, their dreams. And, you know, and you know, like I say, you know, we've been doing this for, for a long time, so we're very passionate. You know, we're people that we're, we come from a humble family, but, you know, God has really bless a big time and we feel that it's always great when you know god bless you and you know you got the time and the opportunity to give back and impact uh other lives so that's why we do it this event because we feel it's important for us all right now i want to give some information and we'll give it again before uh, the end of the uh, the interview it's called the 80 strike back proceeds benefit the carlos beltran academy the school that carlos just spoke about it's a 501c3 organization there's gonna be live music there cigar lounge and auction with great great items Items. Uh, individual tickets are five hundred dollars, and tables are ten thousand. Now, for more information, I want you to call three one zero five two five three seven five five three one zero five two five three seven five five. I'll give you that number again in a minute, Carlos. I guess some of your teammates will be there as well. It's always a good time. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I honestly, Michael, I consider like nonprofit event, and you know, gala is kind of like boring you know uh and every time i do an event i try to make it fun i try to make it lively i try to make uh to the point where people you know can sit down and they need to stand up they need to dance they need to have a good time and you know and this year you know we like i say you know we're we're doing it something different that we have never done you know uh, the 80s strike back and you know a lot of people are going to be uh dressed you know like back in the days and uh hopefully uh you know we we have a good time i always feel the that you know, if you are capable of you know uh, contribute to a foundation, you're allowed to have fun, you're allowed to enjoy yourself, and you know we're gonna have a a big band uh, uh, performing there. Uh, the the band that I was uh, away for for many years. Uh, so hopefully the people come and enjoy and enjoy the music and enjoy the time with us. Carlos, Carlos if, you, if you need me to sing at all, I can sing, I can dance, can. whatever you need, I know, you because I can voice, really make it happen. You have that, bro. <laughs> Build me all a right. buttercup. He sings that very well. <laughs> all right. That's good. <laughs> you know, we were talking about ways to spice up the All-Star game, and Michael had suggested if they had the United States versus the world, the best All-Stars from America taking on all the other countries around the world to play baseball. Do you think that would work? Do you think that would be a fun thing to participate in rather than what it is now? Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think that's what they do in the Futures game. Uh, and, you know, I don't know how that works. But, uh, you know, I think, you know, leaving it like uh, like the way it is, National League against American League, uh, is great. I think, uh, you know, guys uh, playing the, in the American League have the, have, have the chance to be able to represent their team and being able to play uh, together, you know, being an all-star is a, is a great privilege. So, I mean, I'm, I thank God that I'm being able to to be in some of those. And you know, you never have the opportunity to to spend time with with players that you really look look up to and and you admire throughout the whole season. But uh, yeah, I mean, if if you want to spice it up and you want to do something different, that could work also. 